This evening on Business Live, Attorney General to commence fresh set of prosecution at the Economic and Organized Crime Office investigations into the collapse of some banks in the country. Yoko has investigated and forwarded 11 dockets to the Attorney General's office. This has been done more than a year ago. Uh, and I'm saying so just to put pressure on the Attorney General's department that these dockets have been referred to them more than a year ago. Plus, economist Dr. Benjamin Amwa is optimistic the $750 million commercial loan expected in the Bank of Ghana's accounts this week will stabilize the city. Yes, there will be some marginal positive impact on the city. Now, I'm using the word marginal because, like you rightly said, 3.15 cities. And the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industries expresses worry over increasing cost of doing business in the country. High policy rates heightening the cost of doing business in the country. More so, rising public debt, poor domestic revenue performance, balance of payment problems. I am Beverly Broom. Please stay for details. Let's settle for the details now. Now, the city has lost three cities, 15 pesos to the US dollar so far this year. This is equivalent to 33% since the city was redenominated in 20, 2007. Now, the local currency has come under severe pressure as some foreign holders of Ghana's euro bonds have been selling off their stake. This plus other factors have triggered the high demand for the dollar, which is presently going for 9 cities 70 pesos on the retail market. However, the Bank of Ghana has given assurance that the city's stability will be restored soon, based on certain measures put in place. Meanwhile, the $750 million commercial loan approved by Parliament last month is expected to hit the account of the Bank of Ghana latest this Thursday. This would help offset the demand for the dollar in recent times. Now the government will also be able to use parts of the inflows to service eminent maturing foreign debts. Now reacting to the senior finance lecturer at the University of Ghana Business School and executive director of the Center for Economics, Finance and Inequality, Dr. Benjamin Amwa is optimistic that the commercial loan facility expected to hit the accounts of the Bank of Ghana by Thursday will stabilize the city marginally. Yes, there will be some marginal positive impact on the city. Now, I'm using the word marginal because, like you rightly said, 3.15 cities is how much the city has lost in terms of face value from 1st January to today. What it means is that if you were owing a partner $1, you need now 3.15 cities, cities more to be able to meet up that same $1. It means a lot when it comes to transaction cost for those who do this import business and they have to pay in US dollars. So the 7.5, $750 million coming is good. On the other hand, we should be aware that 
it, the whole 750 million will not be pumped into currency management. There are other spending plans for the 750 million. If you look at how much even the BDCs themselves even need to lift crude, clearly $750 million is not that enough. But like they say, half a loaf is better than none. So we are expecting that with the $750 million coming, the city will have some marginal stability. And then again, uh, the question is for how long will the city be able to stand these grounds going forward? Now, the Attorney General should, in the coming weeks, commence fresh prosecution of persons who contributed to the collapse of some banks and financial institutions. This was after the Economic Organized Crime Office submitted work on investigations done on the collapse of some banks and financial institutions. George Riafe has the rest of the story. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, disclosed that the move by the Attorney General has been influenced by submission of fresh conclusion of investigations done by the Economic and Organized Crime Office. The Governor disclosed this at a signing program to advance some 10 million Ghana cities to the Economic and Organized Crime Office. The Yoko has investigated and forwarded 11 dockets to the Attorney General's office. This has been done more than a year ago. Uh, and I'm saying so just to put pressure on the Attorney General's department. That these dockets have been referred to them more than a year ago. Uh, Pass one to section 19 of the Yoko Organized Crime Act 2010 at 804. Notwithstanding all these achievements, there is a lot of work still waiting to be done with respect to tracing of assets, to build concrete investigation, to lead to the effective prosecution of the perpetrators of these financial crimes. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, give more details on how the 10 million Ghana cities will be utilized, which will go a long way to help in the regulation of the banking and financial sector. By this memorandum of understanding, the Bank of Ghana will provide the needed resources to strengthen the operations of the IOCO to execute its mandate. The bank's board approved a grant of 10 million CDs to be disbursed in two phases uh, to support the work of, of IOCO. The support from IOCO in the receivership process has been enormous. The executive director of the Economic and Organized Crime Office, COP Mahamitiwaya Dodankwa, expressed the Attorney General's commitment to commence work soon on the investigations done. Like Mr. Governor said, the dockers are there and Attorney General is doing everything possible, including giving fiat to our lawyers at Yoko so that they can support, provide the backing to the office of the DPP to start the prosecution. Again, he's also going to provide training, tailor-made training for our officer because that area of investigation and prosecution is a bit different from the normal prosecution that we do. Meanwhile, the Bank of Ghana has also advanced 2 million Ghana cities towards the finance and economic research at the University of Ghana, Legon. Here's the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison, talking about how this could impact on regulation or the banking and financial sectors. The agreement will be for a period of three years. I think it's a three million CD endowment. And it is expected that the chair would uh, advance the bank's expectation in, in the formulation of research to support policy. The bank has always been interested in proposals of, of this kind, and therefore this came uh, as a, a very welcome proposal to, 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 to our board. Vice Chancellor, University of Ghana, Legon, Professor Nanaba Apianfo, on her part, noted that the support had indeed come at a good time. I'm excited for two main reasons. One is a time at which this is coming. Uh, we are all not uh, oblivious that this is, these are moments in 
our history that there is a need for sound economic planning and also for, set, for us to set in place appropriate financial systems. And I believe that this collaboration between the University of Ghana and the Bank of Ghana is set to do exactly that. The University of Ghana has the resources, the expertise uh, to facilitate this, this kind of research and the Bank of Ghana has the funds to support this. So I believe that it's a perfect marriage uh, right there. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has announced a sharp increase in utility tariffs. Electricity tariff has been increased by 27.15% and water by 21.55%. This new adjustment, according to the PURC, is as a result of increase in inflation, the continuous depreciation of the city against its major trading counterpart, which among others, other things affect the operations cost of the service providers. Now, the PURC boss, Dr. Ishmael Ake, says the move is to ensure these service providers stay in business. Commission said it gave considerable thought to the role of small and medium scale enterprises in the country's economic development, in particular the creation and preservation of jobs and livelihoods. Dr. Aka maintained that the new tariff is to address high costs for industrial customers, which has been repeatedly identified in the AGI business barometer as the key challenge affecting the competitiveness of Ghanaian industry in the global marketplace. As I explained, we have um, justification for every decision we made. In fact, when it comes to utilities, after even apart from what I've mentioned on the policy level, we also ask them to come and defend the investments they want to do over the, past, the, next, the next three years. So for the investment, you have to look at, one, the cost of the investment. We did arm's length analysis. That if we were to do this same investment in Cote d'Ivoire, how much will it cost us? If, let's say, another utility is doing this in South Africa, how much will it cost? That was done. Then we looked at their, their own trend analysis. So if you take Ghana Water, their investment over the past 10 years, and how it has been, we adjusted this by inflation, again to compare with their figures. Then we invited them to come and defend, one, how much the investment will help them reduce losses, serve customers better, and improve their operations. In balancing the interest of service providers and consumers, the PURC acknowledged that the very economic variables that have occasioned the step increases proposed by the service providers also affect consumers. So, um, yes, um, we said it, and this uh, tariff is actually for the hairdressers, for the organizers, the carpenters. And the reason being that previous years we had a tariff structure that made utilities, uh, industry pay high so that they can subsidize residential consumers. What we are having now is to reduce that cross subsidy. And again, also try to merge some of the bands. Now, when you do these two, what happens is that those in the non-residential class are paying for the first time lower than those in the residential class. And that has been stated in the, in the statement and it will be written to all uh, utilities. They added that they will continue to monitor the operations of the utility service and providers to ensure value for money and quality of service delivery. Meanwhile, Chief Executive of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mark Bedua Bwaji, described the move by the PURC as harsh. He spoke on the marketplace. We'll bring you that story later on, but let's move on. The Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry is worried over the country's rise in debt, cost of doing business and recent economic downgrades by International Ratings Agency. Now, according to the Chamber, it is time for government to focus on adding value to goods produced in the country before they are exported. Now, speaking at a capacity building workshop for some 1,000 small and medium enterprises, President of the Chamber, Clement Osea Mwako, indicated that government must use the International Monetary Fund negotiations to rebuild the economy.
Business Skills Development Program for 1,000 SMEs is an initiative by the Chamber and Development Bank Ghana under the theme, empowering SMEs with the requisite business skills for sustainable growth and resilience. Speaking to members of the Chamber in the welcome address, President Clement Osea Mwaku said the harsh business environment is hurting business operations. He warned participants to use the program to address themselves with some new trends in the business environment. The rapid depreciation of the city against the major foreign currency, the high cost of fuel, high inflation, high policy rates, heightening the cost of doing business in the country. More so, rising public debt, poor domestic revenue performance, balance of payment problems, high government expenditure, and lack of fiscal discipline resulting in credit rating downgrade and loss of external financing is also worsening the country economic outlook, which must be taken care of. The decision to seek balance of payment support from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, provides temporary relief in addressing the external shocks facing the Ghanaian economy. We urge government to provide more support to value addition, local content optimization, export development, trading of domestic products and services, and efficient competition laws, which are sus sustainable tools needed to manage exchange rate and inflation stability. Deputy Chief Executive for the Development Bank Ghana, Dr. Kobna Opuni Frempon, assured the Chamber that the bank is prepared to support their operations with long-term funds. At the end of the day, our success, or your success is our success because um, we all know that SMEs, they form the bulk of uh, economic growth in this country because more than 90% of all private sector businesses are from the SMEs. And so if you do well, we do well because we lend money through the PFIs, but who is the end borrower? The end borrower is the SMEs. So when SMEs do well, DBG will do well. The training program is part of skills empowerment initiatives by the Chamber for selected SMEs across the country. You're watching Business Live with me, Beverly Broom, here on the Joy News channel. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more. Please stay with us. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund has begun work to access the sustainability of Ghana's debt. This is expected to facilitate the clarification of the country based on its new debt level and influence ongoing discussion for an IMF program for Ghana. George Riafe has more in this report.
The Debt Sustainability Framework is jointly put together by the IMF for all its member countries. The two institutions use the classification to basically assess the ability of its members to pay their debts now and in the future. It also helps in program design for its members, as one can talk about the HEPIC program, which Ghana benefited, and on the ongoing talks for an IMF program. The exercise will assess Ghana on seven indicators, with some of the major areas being the country's debt in relation to revenue and also the debt as against our export earnings. The new classification is expected to help those that lend money to Ghana to review our credit worthiness. At the last review, Ghana was classified as high risk of debt distress. But with the country's rising debt stock, one is not sure whether Ghana could flip into the debt distress status. A new classification for Ghana could also influence the kind of program that the country will get from the IMF by the second quarter of next year. Many will be looking forward to the results at some award where the recent development in Ghana, the country could flip into debt distress. That could further triple the cost of servicing the country's loans and further increase the cost of doing business in the country. Economist Professor Eric Osteisebe wants government to urgently follow through the intended economic program with the IMF to calm noise on the foreign exchange market and consequently ease the fast depreciation of the city. The country's economic fundamental has weakened, causing the daily depreciation of the local currency. Speaking to Joy Business, he pointed out that investors want reassurance from managers of the economy before reposing confidence in the country. Investor community is now watching what is government going to do in the next few uh, weeks or months ahead of us. And so that calls for a lot more of um, action, you know, clear cut policy uh, measures on the part of expenditures, you know. Um, so is there room for government to further cut down on expenditure? Uh, can we delay some expenditures uh, to making sure that we put our finances you know, uh, back in a way that is manageable? Are we able to push through certain key revenue measures? You know, and are we being efficient in revenue collection? Uh, you know, if we are able to demonstrate that, I'm sure that uh, knowing that um, we have been here before, you know, uh, just four years ago we were with the IMF and we were able to put in place certain policy measures and we came out. We went to HIPIC and we were able to come out. If we demonstrate that, I'm sure that uh, the, uh, the confidence level, you know, will be rekindled and we will uh, begin to uh, see positive uh, responses. Uh, but the key thing is uh, how do we make these policy measures, you know, uh, sustainable uh, that we don't go back to the same situation. We seem to be moving in circles as a nation. Uh, we put one foot forward and then two uh, foot backward. I think we need to move away from that. We need to think through and to be more, uh, to have soul searching as, economy, uh, as a country, uh, to think about a lot more sustainable policy measures, right? Uh, measures that will ensure sustainable inflow of funds, export competitiveness, we have to uh, look at that, we have to look at our productive sectors of this economy, the agricultural sector, manufacturing sector, how are we supporting Chief Executive of the Development Bank Ghana, Kwame Naduka, says changing the mindset of players in the financial industry is pivotal to increasing support to the agricultural sector. He believes that if financial institutions understand the importance of collaborating with players in the agricultural sector, it will be easier to lend to them. Mr. Duka spoke at a training section organized for financial institutions by Ghana incentive-based risk-sharing system for agricultural lending. The Ghana incentive-based risk-sharing system for agricultural lending introduced the Agriculture and Agribusiness Lending course for financial institutions in 2020 in collaboration with the National Banking College. The program is to help financial institutions improve their capacity to access agri-loan applications 
and manage agribusiness lending. Chief Executive of Development Bank Ghana, Kwame Naduka, lauded the initiative. We got ourselves into a cycle where there was blame on both sides. Everybody was blaming the banks, the banks were blaming the SMEs, etc., etc., and there was no common language. And KK mentioned it earlier, it's all about mindset. We know what we have to do. And so by bringing together today the banks with Development Bank Ghana and Gersel, we then look at the ecosystem. And first we ask ourselves, what is causing the risk? Is it a lack of long-term financing? Is it that we need the SMEs to be more ready to accept the loans and understand how the loans are? Do they have a good understanding of what the banks require to be able to make the loans? It's not a matter of just going out and saying, here's the money. That entered everybody going bankrupt. So I think that now there's a mindset change about working together, collaborating, connecting for the common good. Chief Executive of Ghana Incentive-Based Risk Sharing System for Agric Lending, Chrissy Kobo, retreated his outfit's commitment to growing the agri sector. He indicated that his outfit has identified three things that need immediate attention. Recently, we've also moved into what we call an advocacy platform, where we are trying to look at agricultural and its whole entirety in terms of risk, and to see how we can minimize risk by creating a conducive environment. That's something we launched about uh, a month and a half, two months ago, and it's something that we intend doing. In fact, for this year, we've identified three critical issues. Uh, policy on uh, the issue of exports in terms of export logistics at, at, at Tamaport. And uh, we're trying to look at this whole uh, issue of production, well, large scale versus small scale, and as a country, where do we go? And also, we're trying to look at the issue of poultry, uh, the, it, whether there's an uh, issue of dumping by some of the countries that are exporting to us, so that we also compete in a very fair and uh, conducive environment. So these are some of the things that we're trying to do so that we can then help make recommendations to policymakers. say, right, if you want this industry to thrive, if you want to address these key risks, these are more regulatory and external environmental issues. 55 participants from 12 financial institutions attended the training session. That's all for Business Live here on the Joy News channel. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Beverly Broom. Enjoy the rest of our programs.